Hi guys and welcome to the latest teacher tech video on the Black Lodge. Today we're going to be looking at Sony's new vlogger camera, the ZV-1. This camera costs about 800 euro. It's designed for vlogging. It's got a flip out screen so you can see yourself when you're recording. The big question is how well does it perform and should you order one for yourself? Roll the intro. To show you exactly how good this camera is, this whole video is going to be recorded directly through the Sony Z. I can't even say it. The Sony ZV-1. 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 How hard can that be? This entire video is recorded through the ZV-1, so you can see for yourself the kind of quality we're talking about, the kind of lens it has, and the kind of feel for it. Now, this is the camera on virtually fully automatic settings. Uh, I left it that way just so you can see what it is. You can go in, you can dial in, you can mess with stuff. But I wanted to see how the camera works when let alone. This of course is me as usual recording my audio through the Elgato Wave 3, my personal favorite microphone. But for the sake of full disclosure, let's switch now to the Sony microphone so you can actually hear what the camera itself records. See what you think. Of course, it's not going to sound as nice as using the Elgato Wave 3, but it should do a pretty good job. It's designed to kind of pick up these things and nicely, actually, the camera, I can open the box. The camera actually comes with what we in the business call a dead cat, but basically a little furry thing here that if you were recording yourself outside, you can stick it on top of the microphone and it will reduce wind rustle, which is a really nice addition on their part, I think. I think we've heard enough of what the camera microphone sounds like. Let's just switch back to the lovely Elgato Wave 3. Okay, so what are the most important things you need to know about this camera? Well, the first thing is the flip out screen. Most cameras won't allow you to be able to see yourself when you're recording. That's why people love recording themselves on phones because they can actually see what's happening. With the Sony, you've got that, it's great. It's as easy as just turning it out and having it facing towards you. And you don't wanna be staring at the screen the whole time because of course your eye line will be a little off. So you do wanna look straight down the lens, but it's a great reference point just to be sure that it's still recording, just that you're in focus. You're not missing the top of your head. This camera seems to expose itself based on your face, which is great because it means that it isn't so much worried about the background and it will always adjust its settings to try and maximize you looking as well as possible. And that's a real plus, especially if you're not big into cameras and you don't wanna be going messing with settings. It's lovely to be able to let the camera figure it out itself. Another lovely feature you might notice is that the background is kind of soft and out of focus there. Now it's not crazy out of focus, but this is a natural effect. This isn't like something you can turn on on your phone or on certain webcams that give you that blur effect in the background. This is real in lens, but what it does is if you turn on the setting, let me just turn it off there. It's just one button push. There you go. This is what it normally sees. But if I push the defocus button, it's, it is literally just called the defocus button. What it does is it changes the settings within the camera to maximize that blurry effect for you. So it's not artificially generated. It just changes its settings to give you as much of that feel as possible. And I think it looks great. It really helps separate you out from your background. This camera also does surprisingly well in low light. Of course, all cameras will struggle in low light, but I have a lamp on me at the moment, but if I turn that off, you should see that the camera slowly but surely starts to brighten itself. And it does it very smoothly, which I like as well, so it's not jarring, but it means if your lighting did change, if the sun went in or out or anything like that, the camera's gonna subtly move between those settings and you're still gonna look really good. Now, when I do a comparison video between all the different cameras I have here at the moment, you are going to really see a difference here, I think. It just, it looks great. And actually just as one final test, what I do is now obviously there's light coming off my monitor, but I'm gonna close the curtains here and we can just see exactly how well it does in a dark room. 
Okay, so we're really testing the camera now. So this is me with the only light source being the light in the middle of the room, which is really not a great light. And obviously the light coming off my screen and it's doing a great job. Now I have a big screen here. It's a lovely 4K display. So I'm gonna turn that off and let's really push this camera. Okay, so there you go. Like this is with nothing but that background light behind me, which is really far from ideal. You should never be tucked away in a kind of a dark corner like I am here, especially if you don't have a light like I have. But for the sake of testing, it's great to know exactly what this camera can do in even the toughest environments. Right, that said, let's get some lights back on. Oof. <laughs> Poor camera, come on camera, work your way back down. Work your way down, there we go. Lovely, let's open the curtains. Next feature I really wanna talk about is the incredible autofocus on this camera. So you can see here that I am nicely in focus and the camera's doing a great job tracking me if I move further back or closer in. So wherever you go, the camera's gonna pick you up, which is great. But what this camera does that really I've never seen in any other camera is it has incredible autofocus. If you wanted to show something off, Boom. Look how quick that changed. Do it again. Boom. It, it does it before I can even say boom. Let me bring up my knife. Boom. There you go. Look how clear that is. Even if I was to bring up the Sony box and hold it up to you guys, already in focus, but look how sharp that is. You could just read the instructions straight off that. And then look how quick it returns to me. That's great. If you were demonstrating anything, if you wanted to show someone something, it does that all itself. You're not worrying about focus. You're not holding it there, waiting for the camera to find it and refocus. It's amazing. It's kind of witchcraft. I don't know how it works, but I love it. Another feature that's built within this camera is a skin softening feature. Now you're looking at it on the low setting at the moment, which I think is kind of nice actually. It does soften some of those harsher details uh, as age starts to really reveal itself on me. But for the sake of this review, I'm going to show you what the two other settings look like. So if I bump it up to medium, this is what it looks like. You can see my face is further softened, starting to get a little bit of that kind of plasticky shine, you know, depending, maybe you like it, maybe you don't. It's a little much for me, but now for the piece de resistance, let's put it up on high and see how close to a Barbie doll can I really look. And there you go. How do I look? Nice and shiny, wow, where have all the details on my face gone? Now for me, this is too extreme. This is the kind of terrible stuff you see on Instagram, but it is a feature that you have there. You can turn it off entirely. Actually, I'll show you what that looks like. So this is me in my full blemished glory. Now, you know, it's fine if you wear makeup, fine, or if you've got beautiful clear skin, perfect. But if not, I would say the skin softening on low is kind of a happy balance between. So let's just switch back to that. So what else is worth talking about? Well, I use this camera for streaming, so I'm capturing it directly onto my computer, recording live that way instead of recording onto the camera. And if that's the way you're going, if you're using it as a web camera placement for lecture capture through things like Panopto, any other software like that, this is brilliant. This camera ran for six hours straight for me before it overheated and switched off which is really, really good. That's with it plugged into the mains, obviously, so that the battery won't run out. You're gonna have to do that, I think. Um, and after the six hours, when it overheated, I turned it off for 20, I think 20, 25 minutes. I turned it back on and it ran for another three and a half hours. Now, it probably would have run the full six hours. Actually, it's just at that stage, it was seven o'clock at night and I was done, so I turned it off. So it is really good that way. The battery held up the whole way through it. For some people who don't know, even when you have a battery in a camera, if you're running it like I am now as a streaming thing, that over time, that battery can start to decrease. Just the charge can't quite keep up with the camera running. So you'll see a slight drop off, but this camera is still reporting itself as fully charged at the end. So it probably needed a little bit of a charge, but it didn't drop. Now, if you're recording directly onto the camera and you are out and about, it's a slightly different matter. If you're recording in 4K, I think you're probably only gonna get maybe an hour out of the battery life on this and before it overheats. Obviously you can buy replacement batteries, the heat you can't quite the same way. Now, if you're recording in full high definition, which I'd imagine most people probably still are, you'll get a couple of hours out of it before it overheats. So I, honestly, I think for the size of it, it performs incredibly, but it is something to bear in mind if you're planning to do a lot of 4K shooting while you're out and about.
That said, even if you were doing that, you probably wouldn't be recording non-stop, so you would be starting and stopping the camera, which would give it a chance to cool down. If you're gonna try recording a large amount of 4K out and about, test it before you go out for the shoot. So what are the challenges with this camera? Well, the first one is, I guess, the battery isn't brilliant. Now again, it's a small camera and it is recording up to 4K. So I suppose that's not a huge surprise, but it is worth mentioning, like I said before, if you're shooting 4K with just the battery not plugged in, you may not even get an hour's worth of recording out of this. Another little challenge, while not a deal breaker, is a frustration that the door at the bottom of the camera which has the battery and the memory card inside it, the SD card, cannot be opened while it's attached to a tripod, no matter how small the tripod plate is. So it just means anytime you have to change that battery or to download footage, you're going to have to unattach it from the tripod and then reattach it again. It's not the end of the world, but you'll find that the more you're working with it, it's annoying. The other thing worth mentioning is the charge cable itself is quite short. It is, I must measure it, but I'll just guess it. It's probably maybe 0.8 of a meter. It looks about half a meter to me, but who am I to say? Um, so this is a bit of a challenge that if you're trying to hook it up so you can just run it nonstop like I am here, if you're recording a lecture, you're probably gonna need to have an extension cord on the desk that you're mounting the camera on. Or if you've your camera set up in a tripod somewhere, you are gonna to have to find some way to tape that extension cord actually halfway up your tripod so that the cable reaches the connection on it. Now, it's not undoable, but it's not desirable. This is a common problem across a lot of cameras. I think it's to do with the fact that it's quite expensive to get cables that can do the full charge. You can get longer cables that will transfer data, no problem, but actually transferring the charge is a slightly different thing. I am gonna test a couple of different cables, hopefully over the next couple of weeks that are a bit longer, just to see can we get longer, even 1.8 meters would be brilliant and keep up the charge rate. As soon as I have that information, I'll make a video for you, but just bear in mind, the charge cable is not very long. Another very interesting addition is Sony's Imaging Edge webcam software. So you can download this little piece of software from their site that will supposedly allow you to hook up your camera directly to your computer and use it as a webcam. Now, normally you'd have to use capture cards. And if you don't know what a capture card is, click on the video in the top right hand corner here and I'll fill you in on those. But the benefit of this is you won't need a capture card. And so they can run you between 30 euro all the way up to 200 euro. I've yet to have a chance to properly test it, but the big challenge for me seems to be that they're saying you have to use their USB cable they've supplied, which again is very, very short. So I just can't see how you'd have it connected to your computer and on a tripod in front of you, possibly if you had a laptop mounted on the desk, but definitely not if you have a desktop sitting on the ground. I'll test it more in the future and make a video for you guys. So the most important question is, would I recommend this camera? Yes, yes. I. I so far, I love this camera. Uh, no, it can't do everything that I was able to do with my beautiful DSLR. So everything's not gonna look quite as nice. I don't have as much control over things. But for all the things I'm giving up, I'm getting so much. This camera is so easy to use. And honestly, when time is tight, really, that's a big, big important one for me. So I can just turn it on, flip out the screen, see that I'm recording. I'm always confident and comfortable that I'm recording. And I can just chat away and record this way. The fact I have the choice of recording all the way up to 4K if I want. The fact I can stream this camera for six hours without it turning off. You know, I think for 800 euro, yes, it's a lot more expensive than an expensive webcam, but the quality of the image is so different. The auto focus is so different. Let's see that again. Bam. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's a great camera. It is. If you can afford it, I would say go for it. Yes, you could buy a new smartphone, an iPhone or a Galaxy for close to the same price, but you, you're not going to get the same lens that you get on this. It's just the ease of use that I think is really fantastic on this. It may not be for you, but for 800 euro, I think this is a bargain. Really, really recommend. Okay, that's the end of this video, guys. If you have any other thoughts or comments, if there's something I didn't mention here that you'd like me to check out about this camera, fire it into the comments below. Give me a private message, whatever it is. And otherwise, I guess I'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks, guys.